We're messing about with a few new patterns. we have got this new pattern. Dying to give it a go. Just get them out in the water, give them a go. If you think they need tweaking, take them on, get them back on the vice, tweak them slightly. But I have tied it up a bit different to what I normally tie. Uh, so I'm going to see how it performs in the water. Add that one this time on a steady figure of eight. Close that. Lost that one. Got that one. Okay, before we go any further, what I want to do is yeah. give a special mention. Now, once I decided yeah. I wanted to put this lure together, there was only a few things I really knew. I knew how I wanted it to be fished, and I knew that I wanted to correct certain issues. But what I was really looking for is somebody that had a lot more knowledge in lures. So I decided to ring Gareth Wilson, UK fly fisher. Now Gareth has more successful lure patterns than anybody I know. Now I didn't know what the response was going to be, but honestly he couldn't have been more helpful. So all I want to say is thank you Gareth for all your thoughts and most of all your inspiration. Okay thanks everyone for joining me on this fly tying video. Don't get too excited, I'm not going to be doing a hell of a lot of them. I'm only going to be doing patterns that we realise are worthwhile putting on the channel. Something that's a bit different for one reason or another, or that they are very successful patterns on the water. For this one, there is a lot of detail that's gone into it. A lot of work that you don't see, which corrects a lot of problems that I've been having with lures. One of which is when I'm fishing the lures, which are great fish attractors, is that you don't get as many to the net as to what you hook. This pattern gets a hell of a lot more fish to the net. Now, one of the reasons for that, which could be, is that when I'm fishing with the lure, is that I do notice sometimes that they're coming in sideways or even sometimes upside down. Ellie, quiet! Sorry about that, but I think the dog has just seen a cat out of her bedroom window. So if we think about the pattern in the water and it's fishing on its side, and the fish approaches from this side. So we can see that the fish will probably be well hooked. But what if it's come in from the other side? Straight away I can see that this could be a cause for why we aren't getting so many of these fish to the net. But what I've also done with this pattern is altered the way that it swims in the water. So what we'll do, we'll crack on, show you how we tie it up. Okay, most of the hooks I've got, they fall in mill and they're barbless. And this particular one is the heavyweight champ black nickel size 10 flash bright from lure flash now this could be a bit of an issue i have looked at this online and what i've got on there is golden olive i can't seem to find golden olive any longer we've obviously got the zonka strip a bit of lead wire we've got the micro cactus this is the 0 0.8 millimeter that's in black. To me, it looks green. Then I've got Crystal Flash. Now, I think I haven't got a label with this, but it's obviously like an ice blue or something. 
many different colours. Whatever colour you decide, it's up to you. But I do find blue with a bit of black, it does work really well. Okay, so with the hook in the vise, so the first point I'll make is that I'm no professional fly tire. And my eyes and my hands ain't what they used to be. But you'll soon realise that there is such a thing as a showroom fly and a fishing fly. Most of my patterns are fishing flies. So it'll give you a bit of confidence if you're new at tying flies. So what we'll do, we'll put the tying thread onto the hook. Now what I'm doing is I'm keeping hold of the tail. As I say, because of my eyes and my hands, it keeps it attention and at least I'm getting closer wraps. Bring it back up. And then cut the tail off. If there's a bit of tail exposed, it doesn't really matter. Now, what that's going to do is gives it the lead a bit more grip instead of being on the hook. Next thing, we'll put the lead in. It's only a couple of inches of lead you're going to need. Now, this is the critical part with tying this pattern. Most of the time, you're going to find that the whatever gets tied in onto the hook will either be one side or the other or sometimes directly on top. This needs to be directly underneath. A couple of loose turns, fiddle around with it, get it where it needs to be. So it's important that we keep it underneath. Now this is what will make the difference when it's in the water swimming. This little detail actually keeps the hook in the correct position. So once we're happy with that, that's about. And then start to bring the lead wire. Touch turns, as good as you can get it that is, back up the hook. Okay, what you'll notice there is that I've only brought the lead about halfway up the hook shank. This is another important part. Bear in mind this is your anchor point to your tippet. Putting the weight towards the back end gives that far better balance and more choice of movement with different retrieves. Build up the thread at the front just to balance it out a little and then what I'm doing is to the back build that up locking the lead in and then taking a few wraps over the lead now what I'm doing is I'm going to go from that point I'm going to go right to the front a couple of turns right to the back a couple of turns just doing that a good few times What that does, it just helps lock the lead in and it means that the tying thread isn't going to be going down between the lead. So what we're going to do next, tie in the tail. So I'm only using probably anything in between. Probably. It depends on how much flash you want really. But I'm only working with probably about, what is this, about seven or eight threads. Because what I'm going to do then is I'm going to double that up. Okay, with the tail, don't worry about what length that is because we'll be trimming that off shortly. Once you've tied the first section in, double it back. Then cut it off to whatever you want. Okay, so now we're ready for the zonker strip. So the zonker strip, what I'm looking for is to get the, the hide or the skin to the roughly in line with the back of the tail and just allowing a little bit towards the front end of the hook eye. Pull the fibres out of the way. I'm using a dubbing needle to help me do this. Get right down in there, pulling everything forward. 
moisten them a bit, pull them back, pull them forward. Before you cut, just check it. Once you've done that, cut it off. Basically that length of that tail from the hide back up, we want the same amount. Again, dubbing needle, just to get that out of the way. Put your tying thread to the top of the tail. Sit that on, making sure you're in position. Get a few wraps over there. Don't be too skimpy putting this on. I have had it before where the fish's teeth, after getting a good few fish, I've had it where I've not put enough tying thread at that point and the damn things come loose with the teeth going through. But you don't want to put too much in there either. Bring it to the front. Now we're going to use the micro cactus again. You're only going to need about an inch and a half in length of that. I'm not one for wasting my material. Tie that in. And take it right in to the zonka strip. Touch turns, wind that on, making sure you finish it good for three to four mil or so from the eye of the hook. Then we're looking at pulling the zonker strip forward, stroking everything back. And keeping that bit of tension on there. Once you're happy with that, pull him back, hold him in place, making sure your tying thread is still that little way back. Just gently over and then slowly pulling them up tight. Make sure you're correcting it as you go. Okay, a couple of turns in the front. Now I have seen some of the videos, a lot of them are using the Stanley blades and they're cutting that off, getting a nice clean cut. I'm not gonna trust myself. I'm gonna stick with my scissors. I got a little tag there. I'm not too bothered. I'll soon build up a nice head and that'll slowly disappear. Right, bringing that back a little more. And that's him there. What we've got to do now is put the cheeks on the, the um, with this. Let's see what I do. As I normally get these fibres, they're very delicate, very thin. I lay them out on the table and I get about seven or six, seven, maybe eight strands together. And then once I've got them together, I'll sort of like weave them, just turn them, turn them. And that'll hold them together nicely. And all we're doing then is tying it in and then doubling it back. One, two, three turns. Now when I'm folding this one back, I've got one lining up near enough parallel and the other one I'll take just at a slight upward angle, spacing them out. Okay, once that's tied, switch it over, do the other side. So we're virtually done. All we've got to do now is whip finish. Put a bit of lacquer on the head. But that is it. But the most important part with this pattern is obviously the lead. 
Keeping that hook in its correct position does appear to give us more success on hooking the fish. And the lead to the back creates more balance. And the pattern was really tied up to be fished on the intermediate line. But if you prefer the floater, which some of the boys have done with success, bear in mind this is a light pattern. But when it comes down to the retrieve, it's about working it out on the day. You'll probably find some days they'll want it slow, and other days they'll want it a lot faster. But over the past few months, while we've been working with this pattern, it's been catching a lot of fish. But I hope you enjoy the video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to press the bell so that you don't miss out on future content. Give us a thumbs up and give us a comment. Until our next video, take care. Absolutely brilliant.